Specs for NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 50 series have been allegedly leaked online, and it seems like unless you're a big baller who's got the money for an RTX 5090, then you're going to be disappointed with the rest of the lineup. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Some leaks surrounding Nvidia's upcoming graphics cards have surfaced online and we're going to be discussing them in this video, talk about what kind of performance improvements you can expect over the current generation, if it's going to look like a generation you should hold out for, and more. And I'll preface this by saying take all this info with a grain of salt, we're calling it a quote unquote leak, but this info could turn out to be false. With that said, the information doesn't necessarily come from a random stranger, as these specs were posted on Twitter by copite 7 kimi who's been generally always at the forefront when it comes to NVIDIA leaks, and they've got a decent track record with specs we've seen from them in the past pertaining to previous generations. So on Twitter, according to their post, we have the various different Blackwell dies, along with their corresponding graphics processing clusters and texture processing clusters. Then they've also given the memory configuration and the type of memory they're going to be using. Remember, Micron is said to roll out their GDDR7 memory soon, which will offer higher density and speeds resulting in better bandwidth, even if the GPU memory bus is kept the same. Aside from that information, they did mention in a reply to another tweet that GB207 isn't going to be limited to GDDR6. So what that means is that it will support GDDR7, but Nvidia is probably going to continue to use G6 memory, which would make sense as that would be their smallest die for entry-level GPUs, like an RTX 5050 and laptop GPUs. I wanted to use this table from WCCF Tech's article on the post only because theirs is organized more cleanly and they have included the SM and shader count which we can derive from the GPCs and TPCs. Along with that it'll give us a better comparison between this generation versus the previous generation RTX 40 series. Now looking at this leak and the specifications it's obvious that Nvidia's main strategy, their main goal, it hasn't changed. It's just going to have some alterations and that's it because from the looks of it and comparing the increases in SM count to the previous gen, it's blatantly obvious Nvidia just wants you to buy their top tier die which is the RTX 5090. They will use this flagship graphics card as a means to showcase their new Blackwell architecture strengths and it's going to be a blazing fast card, make no mistake of that. We're looking at a 33% increase in shaders alone, on top of that memory bandwidth will increase significantly considering Copite has listed it at a 512 bit bus and GDDR7 at the minimum will be 28 gigabits per second. So so with a 512 bit bus, you can expect this 5090 to have at least 32 gigabytes of VRAM, or it could possibly have 48 gigabytes if they decide to go with the 3 gigabyte modules. But I don't think they'll do that, and that will probably be reserved for professional cards like the Quadro series or the A series. Then whatever IPC L2 cache increases, that will be another bump and improvements from the architecture itself. Therefore, when comparing flagship to flagship, I'm expecting that this will at least be a 60 to 70% jump over the 4090, and we're just talking about raster performance alone. Blackwell will most likely have much improved path tracing performance, and then we know Nvidia will have some sort of new software feature that will be exclusive to the 50 series. This will of course come with a hefty price tag, and at the minimum, I'm expecting at least $2,000, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see the 5090 announced at say $2,400 or even $2,800. It may not have the best price to performance, but for the folks in this segment, that's not really at the top of the priority list, as they're simply after the best. So the bottom line is that the 5090 is going to be fast, it's going to be an impressive improvement over the 4090, just like how the 4090 was over the 3090, and it will command a hefty price tag, but at this stage, what other alternative will you have? And that is going to be a recurring theme for us in these coming months throughout this discussion. Unfortunately for the rest of the lineup, things aren't really looking so great. And this isn't because Blackwell is a flop, but it's going to be mainly because Nvidia isn't interested in really selling stellar cards to the lower end and mid-range segments, which is why I said their goal is the same where they want as many people as possible to buy the large die through upsell and FOMO tactics, and then for the rest of the segments, they're just going to give mediocre and gibbed cards. When we if we look at GB203, which is what the 5080 will be based on, we can see that it will have 84 SMs, and when we compare that to the 8103 die, which is what the 4080 Super is based on, it's just a difference of 5%. And remember, the difference between the 4080 Super and the vanilla 4080 was like 2% in FPS, so negligible, so you can apply this difference to either card and expect the same gap. But you can see how compared to GB202, the difference for GB203 is very small when compared to last gen. However, the difference in performance may not be 
see as small as the difference in SM count implies, because like I said, there are going to be performance advantages coming from other components, such as the higher bandwidth memory, more L2, and architectural improvements. If you remember, the 4080 only ended up having 12% more shaders when compared to the 3080, and the former also had a slimmer memory bus at 256 bit versus 384. But when you look at benchmarks, the 4080 turned out to be like 45 to 50% faster than the 3080, which I'd say for a generational improvement these days, it's pretty good, but what tarnished the 4080 was the price jump, but we'll talk about pricing a bit later. But also keep in mind the 40 series was on 5 nanometers, whereas the RTX 30 series was on a tweak 10 nanometers from Samsung. It, it was a garbage node, so there was a pretty large node advantage, whereas the transition from the 40 series to the 50 series, there really isn't a huge node jump. So the 5080 will definitely be over 5% faster than the 4080. There's no doubt about that. But the question is, will it be 50% faster? With the specs I'm seeing here, probably not. I temper expectations and anticipate it'll land about 25 to 35% faster. So that would align it with an RTX 4090, which is what the 5080 has been rumored to be. Just a 4090 with the new feature or gimmick. So once again, the pricing is what will make or break this thing. And if the price in the 5090 is going to be like $2,000 plus, then I can see Nvidia charging like $1199 this, the original MSRP as the 4080. At $1,000, I can see a lot of people being pleased with that considering everything else that's on the market. They'll go, wow, this is a $1,000 4090, but it also has a new feature and it's a bit more efficient, so I'll take it. But I guess I'm just being a little bit too over-optimistic here. I was just thinking about this, and let's say the 5090 is about 70% faster than a 4090, and the 5080 is about the same level at 1199 So then that's a 67% difference in pricing, and that'd line up, and I can see folks in this segment going, well, I'll just pay the difference if it means I'll actually get 70% better performance, which is exactly what Nvidia wants. In any case, moving on, and I find the situation actually gets worse when we take into account the specs of GB205, and no, that's not a typo, there isn't going to be a 104 die anymore, GB205 is going to be the successor to AD104. This is the GPU die that mostly everyone is stating that the 5070 series will be built on. With GB205, it looks like this one will just have 50 SMs versus 60 on the full AD104 die. Now, to be fair, the original 4070 was cut down and had 46 SMs, and the 4070 Super wasn't the full AD104 die either, it had just 56 SMs, but the 4070 Ti is what had the full die. Now here's some hopium for you guys. The naming schemes don't necessarily have to correspond with those GPUs as they did similar to previous generations. Who's to say that the RTX 5080 won't be a further cut down GB202 die? It's possible that they could have the 80 class GPU built on the 202 die just like they did with Ampere. But then I question what incentive Nvidia has in doing that since there's really no competition for them. Although what I think could end up happening is that with the 5070 Ti, that could end up being a cut down GB203 and the 5070 will be the full GB205 die and then the 5060 Ti will be a cut down die of that if Nvidia wants to at least give some meaningful performance advantages here. Alternatively what I also see playing out is what happened with the RTX 4060 series barely being an improvement over the previous gen 60 class because if the 5070 Ti has 56 SMs I could see it barely being faster than the 4070 Ti Super which is what a lot of reviewers will compare it to seeing as how it has replaced the original 4070 Ti. And that's going to be a damn shame to see another popular segment just become completely butchered. Jensen has been on record stating how the 70 class has been their most popular segment, and this was because it delivered really good bang for the buck, offering that previous gen flagship or enthusiast level performance and bringing it to the mainstream market. But it looks like that trend will no longer continue to be a thing. I mean, it already was kind of killed with the 4070 series, and that was mainly due to the poor pricing for those cards. But now imagine with the 50 series, if we get price bumps across the board, and they're barely faster than their predecessors. This is going to be a huge mess. Now for GB206, which is what we are speculating the 5060 and 5060 Ti will be based on, there really aren't any changes here except that they'll be using GDDR7. So you get more bandwidth, but that's about it. At the very least, I'm hoping Nvidia doesn't give us any more 8GB cards, with the possibility of them using 3GB modules, 12GB should be the bare minimum for the 60 class in what will be a 2025 release. Other than that, the 5060 series is also looking like it'll be a disappointment, considering there aren't any real upgrades. But like I said, Blackwell's architecture could be a huge leap over Ada, and I could be wrong, so we'll reserve judgment until it's actually out. Then after that, we have GB207, and from what I'm seeing here, there's a 17% reduction in shader count for this tier as well, which sucks. But I'm not going to be spending any more time here, because this tier 
is probably not even going to come to desktop and it will be going to laptop anyways. So that looks like the entire RTX 50 series in a nutshell. And I gotta say, Nvidia is going to have to pull a rabbit out of their hat when Blackwell is unveiled. Because like I said, unless you're a big baller who's got $2,000 plus ready to drop for the 5090, you're not going to be getting a huge leap in raw performance when compared to last gen models, at least according to these specifications. But we know that these days, performance isn't just the main driving force behind behind selling hardware, and manufacturers are pivoting towards selling software features as well. Recently, Nvidia showcased another cool AI-based tech where you can essentially have a chat GPT-like assistant helping you while you play your game, where it will analyze what you're playing, take into consideration what is on your screen, and give you suggestions on what to do or how to approach an enemy. I think that's pretty cool. Is it something that's going to blow your socks off? No, but I still think it would be handy to have. I've been primarily playing a lot of single player titles these days, and there will be moments where I come across something or some kind of item or an enemy and I'm like, you know what, let me just do a quick Google search on my phone and see what I can do to approach this uh, scenario the best way. I have been playing a lot of Lies of P lately, and if you're a fan of the Souls genre, you'll absolutely love this game. I highly recommend it. But I came across this boss that I just couldn't beat, so I went online and was reading comments on how to beat it. It. A lot of those comments were basically people trolling and saying get good or just, you know, don't get hit. But eventually I found that there was a fire weapon in my inventory that was capable of just destroying this boss easily. So here I spent like 50 tries trying to beat this boss, you know, banging my head against the wall when I could have just equipped a weapon from the start and avoided the struggle. So having an AI assistant guide me in a situation like that would be pretty handy. But circling back to the 50 series, it's going to be a very mixed bag and a conflicting series because I just know when Nvidia shows that 5090 and what it's capable of, and then follows that up with a 5070 that isn't meaningfully faster than 4070 Super, it's going to leave consumers disenchanted. Like I said, the messaging is clear. You buy the flagship, if not, you're probably better off holding out for a deal on some kind of last-gen clearance part, last-gen 4090. So nothing really changes from the 40 series. This is looking more like a refresh, if anything, but we'll see. Alrighty guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.